In this screencast, I'm going to use our WordPress starter theme, Sage, to demonstrate how to use our development workflow of using Gulp, Bower, and the Asset Builder with its manifest file. The skills that you're going to learn from working with Sage can be applied to any sort of web development project and not just WordPress theming. Sage uses Gulp as a build tool, Bower for package management, along with WireDep to import assets into the style sheet, and it also uses Asset Builder by Austin Prey to bring everything together with the manifest JSON file. First things first, we need to install Node.js followed by globally installing the Gulp and Bower packages from the Node Package Manager. Head on over to nodejs.org and download the latest installer for your operating system. There's also a project called NVM or Node Version Manager which can be used to easily manage Node.js versions. Once you've installed Node.js, it's time to bring up the command prompt. For OSX users, this would be terminal app, and for Windows users, this would be the git bash command prompt. Let's install Gulp and Bower globally with npm install g, which is the global flag, Gulp Bower. You don't have to worry about any warnings that you might see, and it might take a few minutes for this command to finish running, but once everything is done, you have access to use Gulp and Bower commands globally. Now that everything is installed, we need to navigate to the theme directory by using the cd command. I'm in a bedrock based installation right now, so I'm going to change directories to web app themes sage. Now it's time to install the node dependencies that we have defined in package.json by running npm install. This is going to take a while the first time. Once npm install is completed, let's install all of the Bower dependencies that we have defined in Bower.json. Bower install. Now that both Node and Bower dependencies are installed in the theme directory, we can start using gulp commands. After installing and activating Sage on your WordPress install, you might have noticed that the theme has no styles. That's because we haven't compiled any of the assets at this point. Let's do the initial build by running gulp. Now that all of the build tasks have ran, let's refresh our WordPress installation. And as you can see, the theme assets are now loading. Let's take a quick look into the sage gulp file. Don't be overwhelmed if you don't understand what's going on in here, as it's more than likely that you'll never need to make changes directly to this file. Sage has three gulp commands that run various tasks. The default task, gulp, runs a complete build, which will compile and optimize the files in your assets directory. Gulp watch will compile assets when file changes are made, along with running browser sync. And then gulp with a production flag will compile assets for production, which means no source maps. Let's take a look at the primary build task. Okay, we've got gulp styles, scripts, fonts, and images. Gulp styles is going to compile, combine, and optimize both Bower CSS and Project CSS. Gulp scripts does the same thing except for JavaScript. Gulp fonts is going to grab everything from the assets fonts directory and output it to dist fonts. Gulp images is going to take everything from the assets images directory and run lossless compression on all of the images. Let's take a look at browser sync. To launch browser sync, we need to use gulp watch. After running Gulp Watch in just a second or two, a new tab is going to open on your default browser. It's pointed to the Browser Sync session. The way that Browser Sync works with WordPress is by wrapping our local dev server with the proxy URL in order to view the site. So I'm going to take this same host and go into my iOS simulator and navigate to localhost 3000. One of the big features of Browser Sync is Interaction Sync, which means that scrolls and clicks are mirrored across devices. So if I go to blog, 
which I did on Chrome, you can see that the iOS simulator immediately navigated to that page. Let's go into a post. Let's do some scrolling. Let's take a look at the other big feature in Browser Sync, which is known as File Sync. It's very similar to Live Reload. That means that if you're editing a template file or updating a style sheet or a script, that it's going to be automatically injected into your browser as you're doing development. So let's go into the Assets, Styles, Common, Global Style Sheet, and I'm just going to add a black background to the body. I'm going to hit Save. Once the styles get compiled, Browser Sync is going to automatically reload the session. Let's go ahead and remove it. And again, the browser was automatically updated as I made the change. Let's take a look at adding third-party packages with Bower. Bower's registry has lots of different types of packages available. Sage pulls in Modernizer, jQuery, and Bootstrap with Bower already. If we wanted to add Font Awesome to the theme, we would run Bower install with the save flag Font Awesome. Okay, and this added Font Awesome to the Bower JSON file in the theme. You can see it right here. Now, after adding a Bower package to the theme, any assets defined under the main property in the package's own Bower.json file are automatically going to get built into the theme assets. So if we go into Font Awesome and we look up Bower.json, under the main property we can see that they include the style sheet and the fonts directory by default. That means that the fonts will be copied over to the appropriate destination, as well as the project CSS being applied to our compiled and concatenated theme CSS. Let's run gulp to compile all the assets again, and then try adding a font to a template file for testing. Okay, and while these gulp tasks run, let's go into the footer template. Let's try adding a ship icon from Font Awesome. Save it. Okay, now that all the assets are built again, let's go to our site and refresh. And as you can see, there's the Font Awesome icon. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to override Bower packages. You just saw how Font Awesome CSS and font files were automatically added to the theme assets because of the main property in Font Awesome's Bower JSON file. Our Bower JSON file in the theme already overrides Bootstrap assets, which I'll go over in a bit. Let's install the slick carousel by running Bower install with the save flag slick carousel. And now let's take a look at Slick's Bower JSON file. The Slick carousel package automatically includes a minified JavaScript file, a base style sheet, a theme style sheet, and some fonts. Let's say that the only thing that we wanted to keep was the JavaScript file because we don't want to use their font and we want to roll with our own CSS. So what we need to do is create overrides specifically for the slick carousel package. Let's go over to our bower.json file and add an override for slick carousel. And all we want to keep is the minified JavaScript. So let's go back here and make sure that's all that's brought in. Once we save bower.json, run gulp, the compiled assets will have the slick carousel's JavaScript file, but it will ignore the CSS, the theme CSS, and along with the fonts, since that we overrided slick to say only bring in the minified project CSS. Let's go over removing bootstrap components and how wiredep works. By default, we're pulling in all of bootstrap.less, and it's probably unlikely that you're going to need all of Bootstrap's components on your site. It's a good idea to remove anything that's not necessary, but let's start out by looking at what the bootstrap.less file is doing in the bootstrap package. 
navigate to Bower Components, Bootstrap, Less, Bootstrap.less. And as you can see here, there's a lot of imports going on. But the main thing that you want to take a look at is the Bootstrap Components. Do you need all of these? If you don't want all of these components, you need to update Bower.json's overrides to specify only the style sheets that you want to bring in. Let's go back over to Bower.json, and I'm going to replace Bootstrap.less with the full list of imports that that file is actually doing. And to demonstrate wire depth, let's first bring up the main style sheet. So go to Assets, Styles, Main.less. At the top of the style sheet, you'll find comments related to wire depth. Bower less and end bower are used by wire depth to inject the necessary dependencies into the style sheet. Make sure you don't make any changes within this top area as it's automatically generated by wire depth when we run gulp. To demonstrate how wire depth injects assets into this primary style sheet, I'm going to go ahead and run gulp styles. Okay, and you can see that main.less has been updated with the full list of bootstrap imports that we defined from bower.json. If we remove some of the bootstrap components from bower.json and run gulp again, the wired up task is going to re-inject the necessary assets at the top of the main style sheet. We can also do the same with bootstrap JavaScript by removing any components that we don't want. Chances are you've used a WordPress plugin that adds additional front-end requests to your site. More than likely, these requests can be rolled into your primary theme CSS or theme.js to reduce the number of requests on your site. The first step is to find out which assets you want to remove. You'll likely need to open up the code for the plugin to find the IDs and hooks used to add the assets. To remove the plugin assets, I recommend creating a new function in extras.php. In this example, I'm removing the CSS and JS from my root share buttons plugin. I've also made a note next to each removal with the path of the asset. You'll need to know the path for the assets in order to add them to the asset pipeline. The asset pipeline is managed from manifest.json in the assets directory. But before we go in and add our plugin assets to the pipeline, let's make sure that the function we added to extras.php is actually removing the plugin assets. I'm going to refresh my site and the styling on the share button should go away. Okay, now that the plugin assets are removed and dequeued, we need to add them into the asset pipeline. Open up manifest.json from the assets directory. We want to add the root share buttons JS to main.js and we want to add the root share button CSS to main.css. If we take a look at the specification file from Austin Prey's Asset Builder documentation, you'll see that we can define a vendor property. Let's add the vendor property to our manifest file and drop in the path for our plugin assets. I'm just going to add it to here on main.css and main.js. Then I'm going to go back over to extras.php and copy over the asset paths. Okay. Now that the plugin assets are added to the pipeline, let's run gulp and then refresh the site. As you can see, the styling of the root share buttons is back, and we're not making any additional requests to plugin assets anymore. If for whatever reason you want to add additional CSS and JS files to your theme, you can do so from the manifest JSON file that we were just modifying. The spec for Asset Builder shows various scenarios of how you can add files along with having them built with specific Bower dependencies if you'd like. 
I'm going to show you how to add two new assets, homepage.css and homepage.js, and how to add them to the pipeline along with enqueuing them in WordPress. First, let's create the files. So I'm going to run touch assets styles homepage.less. And I'm using .less because we don't want to write vanilla CSS. And then touch assets scripts homepage.js. And the touch command is used to just create an empty file. Now that the assets exist, let's add them to the pipeline. I'm going to copy the editor style block and just replace editor style with home page since the paths match up. And then let's copy that block. Change the .css to JS and then update the file path to the home page JavaScript file and save. Now when we run gulp we should see our new assets in the dist folder. dist scripts homepage.js and then dist styles homepage.css. Now that we've got the new assets, let's enqueue them. Open up assets.php and scroll down to where the theme assets are being enqueued. Let's copy the sage CSS enqueue and rename it to reflect the new homepage name. So sage home CSS with styles homepage.css and then let's go down to the JS copy that line rename it to home JS and update the path to scripts homepage.js now let's go back to our site and view the source to make sure that the new assets are there homepage.css and homepage.js by now, you should be able to run the gulp commands from Sage, add third-party packages, and manage the asset pipeline. I hope you have fun building your next project with this workflow. You'll probably find that it won't take more than a few seconds for you to fall in love with tools such as BrowserSync. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly, or you can also ask questions over on the Roots Discourse.